From underwater tunnels to cofferdams, here are some incredible underwater and aquatic constructions. Have you ever taken the road or the train underwater? For those of you who have already had this experience, have you ever wondered how underwater tunnels are built? Take for example the Channel Tunnel that connects France to England. To build this tunnel, it was necessary to bring in tunnel boring machines to dig and pump the water out using pumping machines that were deposited at the lowest level. The construction of this tunnel took six years, between 1987 and 1993. However, other tunnels, such as the one linking South Boston to the city's airport, were built differently. Indeed, prefabricated steel or concrete tubes were driven into the trenches dug in the seabed. Underwater tunnels exist all over the world. They can extend over a few kilometers or even tens of kilometers. The deepest in the world is the Eiksund Road Tunnel in Norway, 264 meters below sea level. Other tunnels will follow as well, probably using new technologies, and who knows, maybe one day we will see a transatlantic tunnel linking Europe to America. Underwater tunnels are a real feat, but the project we are going to talk about now is beyond comprehension. It is the realization of an underwater rail link of nearly 2,000 kilometers linking the city of Fujaira in the United Arab Emirates to Mumbai, hold on, in India. The train will pass through a watertight, resistant tunnel fixed at a certain depth to avoid maritime traffic and bad weather. As for their speed, it would be about 1,000 km per hour. This project was announced in 2018, and its main objective is to strengthen trade between the two countries. That said, thanks to this underwater rail tunnel, India and the United Arab Emirates will be able to increase their imports and exports, but also ensure the transport of passengers between the two countries. All this is very interesting, but we must wait to see this project come to fruition, by 2022, if all goes well. Do you like this video? Then, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell to receive all notifications and not miss anything of our next publications. Let's keep going. If I tell you about artificial islands, which one crosses your mind first? The artificial islands of Dubai of course. Dubai started this project in 2001 with the construction of Palm Jumeirah, for which huge quantities of sand and rocks had to be dredged. Of course, Dubai's artificial islands helped to widen the city's coastline. After Palm Jumeirah, Palm Jebel Ali, and Palm Deira, the emirate continued with the construction of the world, an archipelago of islands that represents a map of the world. This group of 250 to 300 small artificial islands, located 4 kilometers from the coast and accessible by boat, is 9 kilometers by 7 kilometers. Here again, there is no comment to be made because the small emirate has proven to be an ace in this kind of construction, both luxurious and durable. Our favorite artificial continent? Europe of course. The European islands include the world's first climate-controlled complex, created using state-of-the-art German technology. So you will find snow in all seasons, produced from renewable energies. Who would have thought for a moment that snow would fall only a few kilometers from Dubai? Now let's talk about another construction of very great importance, namely in the production of hydroelectric power. You guessed it, it's dams. You are not without knowing that dams are true engineering structures, but rather complex, but don't worry, I will explain everything to you. To build a dam, you first have to choose the site where it will be located. It can be a river for example. Then, we must make the water level of the river as low as possible, or even dry it out by diverting it, and this is done by putting up temporary dams called cofferdams. It is these cofferdams that will keep the construction site dry, but we will talk a little more about them at the end of this video. Then comes the foundation stage, an extremely important step in the construction of the dam. Regardless of the type of material used, it is necessary to improve the water tightness of the dam in order to prevent infiltration. Next, the materials are deposited, which must be compacted to have the right water content, and then laid out to achieve the desired thickness. And then, we must not forget a key element, the height of the dam, because it is this factor that will determine the power of the water. In the end, building dams is not that complicated. Imagine that after a good night's sleep, you wake up to find millions of little fish that come to wish you good morning. You'll feel like you're immersed in the fairy tale world of the Little Mermaid, won't you? But, did you know that it is possible to live this fabulous experience even in reality? Well, it is. Let's discover the first underwater hotel villa in the world. This is the Villa, Maraca. It is located in the Maldives and opened its doors in November 2018. 
This villa is composed of two suites, one of which, entirely made of glass, is completely immersed in the water and offers a magnificent underwater view through a simple transparent dome. Wait a minute, how did you build such a thing at a depth of 5 meters? Well, a priori, one would think that there was a construction site under the sea. But in reality, this 600-ton construction was done on land. It was then transported to the seabed by means of a crane and then fixed to the ocean floor with concrete piles. This means that this villa will remain firmly attached even in the event of a swell. You have just discovered Villa Maraca, but I am sure you will recognize the Water Discus Hotel, this futuristic tourist project that was so often talked about a few years ago. Let's go back to Dubai to discover this underwater hotel that looks like a real spaceship. As you can see, it consists of two spherical buildings, one of which is completely submerged. It is in this part that the 21 suites, a diving center, and all kinds of technologies that will allow guests to explore the seabed are planned to be installed. In short, this hotel is so spectacular that we can hardly believe it. Sleeping underwater is one thing, but how about eating underwater? In Norway, it's possible, because it's in the small town of Bailey, in the south of the country, that under, the first underwater restaurant in Europe, opened. To carry out this project, which began in 2019, a 2,500 ton structure was built in six months on a barge. Afterward, containers filled with water were placed on the barge to sink it. In this restaurant, partially submerged in a rough sea, customers can enjoy their dishes at a depth of 5 meters. And according to the architects, the best time to come and eat there would be in bad weather because it makes the landscape even more spectacular. However, the architects reassured customers that this thick-walled restaurant is anchored in the water by 18 anchoring points. And of course, it was built to make it resistant to all extreme conditions. On the menu, seafood, shellfish, and a breathtaking view of the seabed to enjoy. First I'm a marine construction used for the exploitation of an oil field. Who am I? An oil platform, of course. These marine structures, usually made of steel, may seem a little intimidating to you because of their imposing size. They can be fixed or floating, and include all the equipment necessary for drilling or extracting oil. They are built on land and then towed to the site of exploitation using powerful tugs made for the high seas. Some oil platforms, especially floating ones, are designed for great depths that can go beyond 1,000 meters. Of course, each oil field has a lifespan, which means that the oil platform will have a lifespan as well. But, how then to dismantle these heavy structures? Believe me, it's not a piece of cake, however, there are a number of possible solutions to do so or to reuse them on other exploitation sites. Do you know how you were able to access the internet and watch this video? It's thanks to underwater cables. That's right. These cables are an essential element in modern communications. And this technology dates back to the 19th century. It is even said that it was thanks to a transatlantic cable laid in 1858 between Ireland and Newfoundland, Canada, that Queen Victoria was able to communicate with James Buchanan, then President of the United States. All this is very interesting. But, did you know that submarine cables are manufactured in such a way that they can be installed in the water without any problem? After a thorough study of the seabed, these cables are laid using cable ships. To bury the cables, especially in shallow water, plows are used to dig trenches and lay the cables. The cables are then covered with sand and the trench is then filled in. This will protect the cables from any damage that may occur due to ship anchors, marine animals, natural disasters, or some malicious acts. Aquarius Reef Base, the name may not mean anything to you, but it is an underwater research laboratory, the only one in the world to be exact. It was built in 1986 and transferred to the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary in 1992. It is located 9 kilometers off Key Largo, at a depth of 19 meters. This laboratory managed by the Florida International University is a must for oceanographers and researchers who study the underwater world, its fauna, and flora. But above all, they come to observe the coral reefs that surround the Florida Keys archipelago, and can stay there as long as they want. Indeed, this cylindrical base, covered with moss and algae, weighs more than 85 tons and remains underwater, without ever coming to the surface. That said, it offers all the necessary amenities to ensure comfort and ideal working conditions for researchers. After Florida, direction Melbourne, Australia, to discover the Prince's Pier. This 580-meter-long old pier was named after the Prince of Wales who visited the city in 1920. For a long time, it was home to the boats and ships that transported migrants and postal mail. 
But in 1989, the pier was closed and will have to wait several years before being fully restored. This required a large budget as well as a lot of work for the demolition of the apron. Some of this work was even done underwater by divers. As for the pylons, well, they have been renovated and are still there to remind the history of this heritage. Imagine an underwater space station. It may sound crazy to you, but these underwater stations have really been used to study human behavior in a closed environment similar to that of spacecraft. One of these stations, built long before the Aquarius Reef base, was Tektite. It is considered to be the largest American underwater habitat ever designed. This General Electric submarine base, which was located in the U.S. Virgin Islands, was placed in 1969 at a depth of about 15 meters. It was in the form of two cylindrical capsules 4 meters in diameter and 6 meters high, connected to each other by a watertight tunnel. As you can imagine, the installation of these capsules weighing several tons was not easy. Indeed, it required a leveling of the seabed as well as all the submersion equipment and resources necessary to be able to install the structure in the appropriate place and in complete safety. Now back to the cofferdams. As we have already said, these temporary structures play an essential role in retaining water on construction sites for dams or bridges, for example. The most important thing is that they must have watertight walls that are higher than the maximum water level. There are different types of cofferdams. They can be made of soil, steel, single or double-walled, circular, or diaphragm. In short, it all depends on the depth of the water and its pressure, the size of the construction site, and a good number of criteria, of course. So now you know how it is possible to build on water. These were some of the most incredible aquatic and underwater constructions? What do you think of them? Leave us your answers in the comments.